Hey guys, welcome back to Full Bore. We got ourselves a new tool. A uh, nice little single person brake bleeder kit from some brand called Four Uncles. Never heard of them before, but they seem to have good enough reviews on Amazon. So I figured why not make a little video demonstrating the tool because this here Jeep desperately needs to have its brake fluid bled out and changed. So I figured why not? So we got our airline attached to it. And uh, first things first, we need to kind of get rid of the fluid in the uh, brake master cylinder. So we're gonna take that out and then we're gonna go and there's a different attachment that hooks up to the brake calipers to suck out the fluid from that end. So let's give this a whirl. All right, so the idea of this tool is pretty simple. You hold down this lever, Air comes through the system, creates a vacuum in here that pulls whatever out of this tube. So we got this brass connection, goes in like such, and then we're going to take the cap off of the reservoir, and in theory, I should be able to just stick this down in here, and when I hold the lever, It is in fact pulling it out. So why don't we get a view closer like above so we can actually see down the hole as it's draining out. Now, one thing I've noticed about this tool is it does like to have just a little bit of air going through it if this thing isn't like pulled up this lever. So you'll hear a little bit of air Come out of here now. Maybe it's because of the pressure we're at. We're currently at 110 psi static pressure. Although this thing advertises capability of being up to be able to use under working pressure of 170 psi. I'm not sure how much I believe that, uh, given the fact that we have this little bit of leaking. And I can tell this tool is going to be particularly an air hog. So if you're running something like a pancake compressor maybe you might not get some good, all that much performance out of it because, uh, oh, I feel like my regulator. Yeah, we didn't use too much air, but that was just a little bit of fluid. So let's, we'll, we'll see how much air it actually hogs up. But uh, now that we've got that taken out, it does come with a little bottle to automatically fill up the fluid as we drain it. And that would be this little guy. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up and attach it to, I believe, where the cap used to be. Okay, so this is actually made of some pretty beefy feeling plastic. It's very thick. And a little O-ring popped up. That's okay. So what we're gonna do is fill up this bin. So we're just gonna poke it here with my knife, put that aside for the second, and get this thing topped up. Now this holds about one liter, I believe, somewhere near that. There. That, that is about, that, that is the entire container of dot free fluid that we have. We're just going to screw this on, make sure it's got a nice tight seal. For right now we're going to shut the valve off. And then this is supposed to attach. We're going to try it like this. That seems to hold it in place nice enough. Now we are getting a little bit of fluid coming out. And I wonder if that is due to a bad seal 
Not bad design. Hmm, we'll have to find out. But for right now, assuming now we're gonna open up the valve. It's gonna drain down and fill up the master cylinder here to a certain point. And it should stop draining once the level gets above the nozzle. Yep. All right, physics are on our side right now. So it'll stop filling up once it gets past the nozzle. And then now we can just leave this be and get to the brake caliper and start using the tool to drain the fluid from there. All right, assuming you got your car jacked up on a jack stand, you got your wheel off and access to the bleeder valve. Now we get to hook up a different attachment that comes with this tool. Now this end will connect over the bleeder valve. So we're gonna go ahead and connect it. There we go. And then we're gonna come over here to our bleeder valve. Now I sprayed it with a little bit of penetrating fluid because we are in the rust belt. And boy howdy, things get rusty around here. And we are going to stick our connection over the bleeder valve. All right, so it's on there. So at this point, we should be able to just take our tool and let it rip. Okay, so it's pretty clear that this thing is going to take a while to suck the fluid out, but I think they anticipated that because there's this lever here, or this little hook. It goes over the lever, and you can just let it sit there and do its thing. And it's continuing to pull it out, but it definitely is an air hog, for sure. All right, so we've had this thing running for about five, 10 minutes now. And as you can hear, the air compressor is going non-stop to make sure the tool is fed with air. Now, if you look at the line, you'll see the brake fluid is actually coming through clean. So uh, we're, we are pulling clean brake fluid through now. And if you look at the actual bucket, this is what we started with, and this is what we're pulling through right now. So we definitely got clean fluid coming through. As far as the air bubbles are concerned, I'm wondering if the tool doesn't have like a perfect seal, but if that's the case, we just need to tighten the, uh, the nipple before we uh, pull off the connection so we don't accidentally let uh, air back in through the brake line. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do that. So look in through here. We're going to close the brake line before we take it off. And now, should be good. And this will just pull the rest of what's in the line out. And we can stop using the tool. All right, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna press the brakes down and kind of see how it feels. Make sure it's not like spongy. We've only done one of the four sides, but uh, with the non-consistent flow, uh, being there was air bubbles in the line, I just wanna make sure that for whatever reason we didn't introduce air into the brake system. Okay, so we're on the other side of the vehicle. And as you can see, we have a solid flow of brake fluid coming out and going into the, the container. This is what we want to see. We may capture a few air bubbles that were pulling out of the system, but you know, that's part of the point of this. So here's the thing. If you are using this system and you stop giving it suction, air will flow back into the system. However, if you know that's about to happen, there's this little connection right here. You put, you plug this up, and then it keeps off the connection. 
preventing air from backtracking into the system. So after doing a little bit of research, uh, it turns out that when you use these sort of air system bleeders that use your compressor, it is kind of common to have little air bubbles pop up throughout the line as you're bleeding. And it has to do with the bleeder valve on the caliper. You're actually sucking air in between the threads of that bleeder valve. So there are certain little pastes you can put on the threads to kind of prevent that. But we're not going to be going into that as of right now. As far as this system goes, well, we pulled out a liter of disgusting old fluid and we did get fluid back into the system. Um, we're going to now test drive the Jeep and make sure everything feels okay. If there's any sort of sponginess to the brakes that could indicate air in the system. Uh, so we need to make sure everything went okay because this is our first time using this particular tool. And I'm not entirely convinced that everything went as it should have, but a test drive will reveal more about what we need to know. 